Hi Sean, so this is the stuff I was talking about. So this is the motor. Um, uh, I believe they call them uh, marshmallow machine motors or something like that. Um, and this is the kind of controller I was using. Um, so I've added this um, direction button and the two LEDs. Um, so you can see and hear it as well. So it goes on and then This is about 30 volts, and I can run it the other way around. Um, so, I actually recently made it to one of these, so it's that one. I just wanted to use a larger button because um, that one doesn't handle a lot of power. Uh, so, they ended up on this one. Um, same thing, a little bit of modification. Um, I really like to have two switches on these because. The amount of power they put out is quite large, so they can actually cause fires pretty easily. If, even though I have like five meters of relatively thin wire, um, if I short this, they within like fifteen seconds they the wires melt. Um, so I like to have the double the security of like having two repel safes, so like two buttons that turns it off. So uh, the center of this turns it off. Also, I have the off button for it. Um, so, in terms of uh, what I'm using, let's see, I am using this thing, so um, obviously they have pretty hard life, so um, yeah, they get beat up, like, they, I use them quite heavily. Um, so I put a notch on the back, um, so I put a screwdriver here and I can rotate it, so uh, a bit of shim I have there. Uh, let me actually put a chalk on it. So it's like one of these um, drill chocks. Like a, it's not a taper taper fit. It's a, a screw fit. It's like a three eight twenty four I believe. Um, so anyhow, they land on these, um, and I put like two holes for like set of screws. So you disassemble the chalk, um, and you put through, and pretty pretty handy stuff. And uh, just to give you an example of like the kind of thing I run with it, um, I do run things like this, which is relatively big. Um, it's actually not a full size because I usually, when the outside gets um, used up, I usually uh, score it as it's run, so I get a circle, and I just uh, chop it off with a uh, uh, metal shears, and I just like clean up the edges, and it's a fresh disc. And as it gets a smaller, I use it for like a smaller disc. Um, these, uh, I don't, uh, you can buy the plastic, but they don't really come like this. I actually machine the heads for them myself. Um, so I actually inserted a slug here. Um, and made it so you actually accept a screw. And also uh, made these for it. So you can actually uh, connect it and like use one of those discs with it. Um, what else? Um, the other thing I was doing was uh, the the reason I like these motors is also because the long shaft on this thing, if you disassemble it and carefully uh, press this end, you can actually end up with equal amount on each side. So what I had was um, uh, two ends on this thing, and I can turn it into um, a pretty a lot of mess here. Pretty nice grinder. Um, I do rotary grinding with this thing. So, for example, I bought these two cheapos um, a while back, and I rotary ground the head, um, the the back of the head, and the ends. As you can see, um, it, it works fairly well. Um, and it did a bit of polishing, uh, and I finished these with uh, my finger sander, uh, which I also custom built. I'm gonna show you in a bit. Um, anyhow, this, so you can run these from like very slow to pretty fast. Um, as for turning tools, I'm gonna jump around a bit. Um, these are usually what I use. Um, these are like um, 
uh, drill blanks and these are like high speed steel um, you, can, you can find these on ebay pretty cheap they're not, they're not really pricey stuff um, the, the grinds are kind of up to you like I have two uh, radiuses and I have like a really sharp point and like another one flat one um, the most common ones are these two for like removing a lot of metal um, and like one of one of the cool things about this one um, well I use this for a bunch of things because I only have one disc right now um, I actually I actually machined the holders for this thing on this thing um, so if you actually look at this thing these I machined on on the on the same motor so I actually turned them on on this motor and uh, same thing for this side um, and everything is pretty cheap like the, the grinding wheel is about five dollars I believe five something um, the motors are like twenty two twenty three dollars um, these these are from my aluminium ingots oh by the way let me actually show you some of my ingots so back then when I was doing it I was actually trying to get rid of some of the aluminium that I had collected so I was trying to melt them um, not with the intention of casting anything or just trying to make ingots so I can melt them next time around much easier so uh, these are the ingots I was making um, and like a smaller one and something like this so these were like cake molds these, oh these are actually much nicer because um, uh, oh by the way always tag your metal so you don't mix up like I have I have zinc and I have a bunch of other stuff um, uh, these were nicer because the wall taper is much smaller so I can actually use them as a solid block you don't get nearly as much useful out of this one but uh, yeah whatever I, that's what I had at the time um, actually I'm working on making a new furnace um, the old one was kind of weathering too quickly so I did I don't know about three times this three to four times this and the body kind of gave up so um, I'm waiting for uh, getting some better stuff to do a uh, better one um, so anyhow um, these are basically the turnings I've done out of that so um, these are for example for the other side of this thing like one of the attachments so that goes in I have like three small set of screws in there and I haven't actually finished this side quite yet um, they go in this thing that doesn't have a hole yet I have to drill and tap that thing and this is supposed to accept about a whole stack of these so I can actually run it in uh, pretty high speed and like these these give me a lot more grinding capability uh, for like hugging metal anyhow getting back to the grinding um, what I usually end up doing with grinding these is something like this um, usually because I end up using the sides as well for like cleaning and removing shit so um, I usually give a touch up to the sides as well so it's like something like this and then you can do like a sharpening like this and it gives you a pretty nice head um, so anyhow that's that what else um, um, for wood turning for a while I used to use something like this it's um, a dryer dryer motor oh like a washing machine motor I, you can use either one uh, problem is you can't really control the speed of these um, they usually come in like one or two speed and that's that um, it runs pretty quiet um, it was kind of nice but um, it's not exactly the best um, I usually prefer uh, DC motors um, I actually have a um, bank of batteries here uh, two car batteries uh, that are continuously in charge and um, all these controllers run out of that one so I have like a 12, 12 um, and 24 which ends up being 30 actually volts um, 
lines that I run a lot of things out of, um, including these drives. Um, and as for the grinding heads, um, actually, before I go there, this is like a thing I put a few years back, uh, put together. Um, I just kind of needed something. So this one, um, the, the, the reason behind this design was um, to be able to do like pipe. So it actually conforms to the, to the shape of whatever you're putting on. Uh, so you can actually um, get like rounded, really nice rounded corners out of it. Um, like you can adjust tracking, you can, um, I don't know, do, do whatever. Uh, you can actually flip this around as well. I can remove the head so I can get like a pipe uh, platform from here as well. Um, actually, let me just run it as a, give you an idea. So I can run it from like really slow for control the stuff to like, Anyhow, that's that. All right, Dremel. Dremel. Um, there are a lot of handy tools you can use with Dremel. Um, these are like some of the stuff I have for my Dremels. Um, uh, so these you can buy. Like these are the the saws um, um, for removing like a uh, bulk amount of aluminium. Sometimes I stack them like this, so I have a stack of two, um, and I offset them. So this helps it with not grabbing. So you can actually like lean on it and it doesn't grab and pull. Um, and by the way, be careful with these because once they pull, they usually run over your hand and see this kind of thing that, yeah, they can do a lot of damage when they run off. Um, so, this is also a glue chalk, so I can actually super glue something to this and turn it. Um, um, I have something similar to this for turning wax, so I can make like um, casting stuff. But um, um, yeah, and this is like a smaller one. I can just put it directly on a motor and like glue something to it and turn it. Um, this is like a chalk one, so I can actually hold it with the same motor. Um, other thing is um, you can buy a bunch of um, um, shafts depending on depending on your use. Um, these usually come with like like those drill mounted grinding discs or whatever. Um, I make a bunch of them for myself because they have more um, features that I want. Uh, so these are like wa um, washers that they actually um, attach on top of these, like these are like the default ones. Um, these are actually kind of nice, these are like a bigger, bigger screw, etc. Um, so I can make like a whole bunch of variety, like a, with larger flats and whatever. Um, I'll show you further down where those go. So, um, some of the essentials, um, I think you should uh, go through these. So, get yourself some uh covered uh, burrs so these are these are amazing like just, just get them like they're the best thing ever um the next thing is like these uh diamond wheels um they're pretty cheap like the diamond is like industrial diamond so like it's not a it's not a particularly expensive stuff uh you can get like a small wheels like these out of it as well i um, actually show you a bunch more, um, and like a diamond head and a diamond wheel dresser, so like if I want to dress this thing, I can use these to like uh, form it or whatever. Like for example, I turn these um, out of, um, they're not fully balanced yet, but like I just turned it rough shape out of like um, uh, grinding, like a sand sanding block I had. Um, what else? Um, a bunch of these I make myself, so I'm gonna leave those for last. So these are the defaults you can buy, like different profiles. These are also super handy. Um, um, like they have the the heads and whatever. Um, I don't know stuff I put together myself. A chalk for like holding a stuff. Sometimes I need like a something I can control and I can put something on it and work with the other one um, on it. Um, uh, scotch bills, so um, 
like these are my own uh, heads uh, I use these as well um, I used to use those bigger ones but um, these actually work really well so these I, I cut myself as well um, I'm gonna talk about this foam later on as well so those are pretty handy um, ay -ay -ay. They don't go in okay so what else um, oh before I get there this again I think it was like a toy uh, I took apart put a shaft on it put like a bit of foam to pad it this is actually quite handy for a lot of things um, I keep the broken um, belts out of the finger sander uh, and I can use them in um, like a flap like a homemade flapper so um, where did they go? Oh, I it here. Anyhow, it's, it's just, just basically a bar with a line in it. So you just cut uh, cut a line in a bar and you can actually um, put it in and wrap it around it. And you can use a lot of like sandpapers like that and it's, it's really useful. Um, so... Let me get to the next one. Um, these, I have a lot of random stuff here. These are actually all really handy. So you can get, um, um, like, these are the used ones. Uh, you can get a bunch of these um, online. Usually they're not that good. And also you have to run them really high RPM. Otherwise they, they really don't work well. Um, these are like polishing wheels. So they are like super fine polishing. Um, Like, 50-50 on these um, I can't say I don't like them but yeah they're fine um, these are great these are usually um, this says like dentist tools or whatever so these are like rubber uh, that is uh, infused with diamond um, so these actually polish polish really nice um, they don't do like fine polish um, they have like a color code for like what kind of what degree of polish it does but um, um, out of the stuff that you can buy, these discs, uh, so those are like reinforced cut-off discs. Um, these are kind of crap, to be honest. Uh, there are these other ones which are not reinforced, so these are like um, uh, basic, just just like super thin uh, discs. These break like crazy, um, and if you're running at high RPM, they spray like crazy. But um, one thing they have going for them is they're really thin, so you can get to places that you can't get normally. And I like to use them with this kind of um, uh, mandrel because, um, again, these are like, I had a washer and put on and whatever. Um, this actually pads it and provides a lot of support so they don't break nearly as easily uh, with this thing uh, and with padding because it absorbs the vibration and stuff. Um, without it, like, if you just put it on one of those shafts, it, they, they break like crazy and they're not fun. Um, other things, um, sometimes I grab one of these discs, uh, sanding discs, um, they actually last quite a bit, so they're really nice. And I actually, um, like, I, I cut them off with, like, a, a metal snip and just, like, draw it on and cut it off. And I dress the edges with diamond look as I'm as I'm turning it I dress the side so it doesn't have bears and crap on it um, so these as you can see I put the washer in it so it actually gives it like a, a ball shape um, so these I usually cut myself so it's like different different grades uh, so like 80 120 180 whatever and these are like from um, belt sander belts so it's like I had an old one so these actually work super nice I love these um, it, these were really old so I was was kind of surprised they actually worked that well and these are the ones that I made out of like the grinding disc or whatever usually usually what happens is like I have a I have a disc that goes bad and I sort of recycle it and turn it into a smaller disc um, the other thing you can usually buy is like one of these uh, or more accurately you can buy them in this format which is like one single wheel I actually did a bit of again hacking so I added like two wa two custom made washers for them so it, they actually compress and I have like a larger wheel so as I tighten it it actually grabs the, the things and anyhow like 
those are useful. Um, let's go to the other box. Yeah, I have a lot of these. Um, again, those are the rubber ones, um, the cutoffs, uh, the diamond disc extras. These are solid discs, polishing, um, reinforce, etc., etc., etc. Um, what was the important stuff? Oh, the diamond stuff, you can get them in a lot of different formats. Um, the trick with diamond is to not apply too much too much pressure because um, the diamonds are not really embedded really hard. You just have to give them a little of time to cut properly. Um, some Kyward carbide end mills for drilling to like harder stuff like glass or whatever. Um, they come really handy. Or like removing um, broken drill bits and that kind of thing. Um, a bunch of punches that I made. Um, these are like for softer stuff, but like um, basic punches. So, for example, I punch out these out of the form, like out of these um, formats uh, for uh, the stuff I'm going to show you next. So, uh, extras of that. So, right, that's the wheel I use very often so this is like a support pad um, and a long flat screw here and a bit of foam so that's where the forms go um, I actually end up using a bit of rubber here as well it's like a bicycle tire or something um, so I can put like a disc on it and the holding sandwiches and I can use it on a disc um, the nice thing about this one is because it has a thick soft padding behind it, it actually conforms to a lot of corners and shapes and lets you do a lot of like fine work. Um, which is quite nice. Like it actually gives you like finishes that you can't get quite with other stuff. Um, the other thing which looks horrible like at the moment is this one, which if I can find pliers. So Again, this I turn this um, just like on in one of the motors, like I literally turn it and I locked it, locked it, locked it on and turn the rest and made a ball here. So it actually forces this thing to to form a ball. Um, it's actually kind of a stack for some stupid reason, but you can run like a small disc. Um, like I have a good one. I usually keep the crappier ones on it because um, sometimes I don't need. The disc could be fresh because they dig into the stuff. Like I want it to actually be a little bit dull. Um, so occasionally I have one or two, but like this one is probably a goner. Um, and I kind of use one of these as a back support a little bit, to so I can like lay a little bit on it and it doesn't like lean away from me. Um, anyhow, um, jumping around, so bear with me. Um, these I can use on Dremel as well, so I also made like turn these shanks as well. Uh, so uh, these are out of like the same metals that we have in in like the sheet metals we have in teak welding and in like in the fab shop. Um, so these are like scraps out of that one. So I turn them to washers and um, to sort of hold the wheel, um, so I can do a lot of stuff with them. Same thing with this one. I just made it like a bit larger. Um, so. It holds like full size uh, discs. Um, I can I can literally like I usually put like something like this on it if I need to. But what happens is with the large grinder, like with the ten inch or fifteen inch, as I use these, um, as they get a little bit smaller, I actually keep them for this kind of use because they give you a lot more control and a lot more accuracy. At the same time. Um, they're actually really good at cutting like compared to like those crappy ones uh, that come for the dremels these actually work a lot better so anyhow another another turn thing so works real nice uh, i love it it took a while uh, to make all these but man they're handy um so anyhow oh one item i forgot um if I make a similar head for the other side, I can actually put like these pads as well. These are really nice. Uh, I kind of did the mm, sort of polish on this with that one. It looks a bit dull because I actually sprayed it with lacquer. Um, 
Um, uh, what else? What else? Oh. Diamond wheels, you can get them in bigger sizes as well. Um, just to give you an example of what you can do with them. Um, this is like a piece of stone, like this. Then I turn it to a badge thing, like this. Uh, just an experimental thing. Um, anyhow, that's that. Um, and I'm gonna stop the video. I'm gonna show you the late in a sec. So this is my late. Um, not really a late. It's just a motor. Um, I hold it in a wrench wise and. Uh, this is actually quite new addition. Uh, I just got this wise, um, uh, sorry, the the forger chop. Uh, I don't know, uh, two weeks ago or something. Um, I just turned like an attachment for it and attached it to a motor. This is not really strong enough. So, if I actually want to do more serious stuff, I would um, put a bearing block here to support it, like as close as possible. And I'm probably gonna put a bearing block that is pretty large, so I can actually. Um, push the stock through and it wouldn't hit the the motor um, which means I can't direct drive it which kind of is a shame I really like direct driving but oh well trade-offs um, um, again super cheap uh, I don't know ten dollars dial indicator it works um, another like 10 or 15 for like a thing um, they don't come nearly as nicely finished like I, I actually like cleaned it up and like did the blacking again myself but it works like it's, there's nothing wrong with it um, for the purpose like if you if you're on budget um, so anyhow the lathe is probably considerably overkill in terms of power this is 800 watts motor um, like at 36 volts i believe it would take something like 28 amps which is crazy um i mean it's not a lot but uh, it has a lot of torque which is the nice thing about it so this is the sort of lowest speed i can get out of it and the chuck is loose so it actually makes clicking noises um it can go up Yeah, it's not a good idea to rev it so high because the chocks are not evenly in, so it's actually unbalanced. Um, anyhow, um, so that's kind of my late at this point. Um, I literally, um, uh, when I have to remove a lot of stuff, um, I put something under, uh, I can find something, which I can't right now. Um, I put a bar underneath, use it as a support, and turn it. Uh, for aluminium, you can actually use the sharp point. It kicks every now and then, so you have to be careful about that. Um, I use it like like this, so it actually shaves. So it works really well, as long as you don't have interruptions. If you have interruptions, it's a pain. Uh, it kicks a lot. But once you remove the interruptions, and like you're you're actually in a circle, like. I start from like a square, so it's a bit of a pain. Once once I'm at this stage, it turns really nice and easy. Um, for example, this thing, I don't know if you can see, it has a bit of waviness. That's just because I was rough cutting it. But once you go to high RPM and just like, just remove like a touch off of it, it actually cuts really nice. Like I had, I had a few shiny ones, I don't know if you noticed um, in the other ones, like in the mandrels. Um, and you can always like do a little bit of scotch bright and just it makes it like super super shiny and clean um, Yeah, that's about it. I think for all the basic tooling I have um, literally for like Rotary grinding what I did was I put that that grinder thingy And this And I just brought it into it and let it like gradually work, work its way in. Um, it's loose, but the idea is it wants to be a certain state. So if I push it a little bit to the to the work, it always wants to come back to that, that uh, stable position that it wants. So it actually removes the bumps gradually. It's not nearly as nice as like a solid machine, but it works. Um, so yeah, I believe that's about it.